Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about six tips to help you negotiate a better settlement with your insurance adjuster. Coming up. Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm gonna give you six tips on how to negotiate a better settlement with your insurance adjuster. Now, as some of you may be aware, I recently had a major fire in this huge property that I'm sitting in right now. I can actually smell the smoke as I'm talking right now, and you'll see a lot of debris behind me. I'm actually sitting here right now waiting for an adjuster to meet with them. And I've been taking a lot of notes, I've been reading a lot of books, I've been doing a lot of research on how to hone my skills of how to communicate effectively with adjusters. It's very important because they're the ones that decide subjectively how much you're gonna get paid on your claim. Now you can always hire a public adjuster or an attorney, but remember, they're gonna take a portion of your claim. So as much as you can do on your own, the better off you're gonna be. I consulted with one attorney and he told me, hey, listen, Ernesto, if you can get 300,000, for example, and you're not satisfied, and I have to come in and litigate on your behalf, I get like 400,000, I'm gonna take 30% of whatever base amount you negotiate. So I thought that was a fair amount. I thought, okay, that sounds fair. If I can get a 300 on my own, and he can get me an extra 100, and he takes 30% of that, I'm gonna get an extra 70,000. So it's a win-win for both of us. The problem is, if you go right to an attorney right off the bat, they're gonna take 30% of your entire claim. So instead of getting 30 grand, he's gonna get 30% of 400,000, which is 120,000. You don't wanna do that. You want the money to rebuild your property and make it as nice as you can. Public adjusters, same deal. In my opinion, they offer you much less value than an attorney, and they typically take about 20% of your claim. So if it was a $400,000 claim, I would have to pay them 80%. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me to hire one, but here we are. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can try to do it on your own, and when you get as far as you can, if you're not satisfied, then you can go to an attorney. Otherwise, you can follow through on executing on your own. Rule number one, if you get a low offer from an adjuster, ask them why and give them the chance to explain. After they're done explaining, take notes while they're talking and ask them on their certain points why they decided to pay you less than you thought your claim was worth. You wanna make sure that you have a reason to contest what the adjuster is saying. You don't wanna just contest it just for the heck of it. You can't say, hey, I want a million dollars. Well, they're gonna say, why do you want a million dollars? You have to have a reason. So listen to the adjuster, take notes, and then question them on the points that you don't agree with. You can also ask the adjuster to give it to you in writing. That's what I recommend. In case you end up in litigation later, you definitely want to have a paper trail. It also gives you something to reference yourself later on when you revisit those pain points. Because sometimes you can go back to them with a supervisor and they may be able to address those issues for you. I'm gonna combine item number two and number three because they're basically the same thing. Ask the adjuster if they need any more documentation from you. Don't assume anything. I know I was talking to my adjuster on this house. You know, we were talking numbers and she gave me this bid and I was like, well, why are you giving me such a low offer? And she started going into the details and I realized that she and the contractor made an assumption that this room here actually to my right was an illegal addition to the house. They also assumed that the laundry room was, was illegal. What happened is the structures look really old compared to the rest of the house. And I went to the city assessor's office, I pulled the plans for the house and they are in fact part of the original structure. The thing is that the owner of the building before me updated the entire house minus those two rooms for whatever reason. 
which made them look a lot older and it made them look like they were probably illegally added. So the adjuster was not properly compensating me for those rooms and that additional square footage. So by her telling me that, I was able to give her copies of the county assessor's records that I had, that I know I had sent her before. So don't assume anything. Make sure they have all the documentation, talk to them and have them go over what they have. You should have a checklist of what you've sent them and confirm with them that they have each of those documents. You wanna make sure that nothing goes uncounted on your claim. Rule number four, sometimes you might have to lower your offer. You have to be fair. So look at everything and be objective. Look at if the claim and the claim amount that they're offering you is fair. If you're getting bids from a contractor and they're saying 600,000, but you got some for 300,000, how are you gonna ask the insurance company for 600,000? That doesn't make sense. You have to be reasonable. I could see maybe 320, 330, 350, but 600,000, that doesn't make sense. The insurance company's gonna tell you to take the, take the contractor that, that's offering 300. They're also a licensed contractor, so why wouldn't they be able to produce the same quality work? So be reasonable. You don't have to undersell yourself, but know that there is a limit to everything. And if you do not act reasonable and you decide to go with an attorney or an adjuster, then you can risk actually getting less because they have to take a percentage of your claim. So make sure that when you do go to an attorney or an adjuster, they take a percentage off the additional amount that they are able to add to your claim, not off the total claim amount because you may have been negotiating for a few months and you don't want them to benefit from the fruits of your labor. Rule number five, if you're not getting anywhere with the adjuster and you guys are just not agreeing on things, it's okay to file a complaint with the Department of Insurance and forward a copy of that complaint to the adjuster so that they are aware that you mean business and sometimes that may cause them to wanna to work with you a little more and resolve the case. Filing a complaint is never an option that you want to totally avoid. Sometimes it's in your best interest to file a complaint with the state insurance board. That's going to help you maybe build your claim. Rule number six, sue. Sometimes you just don't have another option. I don't like suing people. It's the worst thing you have to do. It's a waste of time, but sometimes it's your only and best option. So if the insurance company is not being reasonable, then you're gonna have to sue them. Let's say the contractors are offering you bids to fix your home from three to 600,000, and the insurance is saying, hey, I'm gonna give you 200,000. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I would ask them why. And if they can't give you some good reasons, then they're just screwing with you. There's not much you can do. There's some insurance companies that are like that. Some are a little more reasonable and they, they're willing to work with you but some of them, that's just the way they work. They just screw you over and they're not interested in working with you on trying to resolve your claim. So sometimes in those cases, suing is your best option. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please comment below and I'm happy to answer for you. Thank you.